Hey, what's happening, family? It's your man, Mark Black. <clears throat> you know what time it is. Link's in the description to grab yours so you can join me for Morning Joe. It's a nice morning out here. Take a look. Sunny as hell. So we're going to do a walk in Joe. <sighs> All right. So... I'm not one of these people that jump on bandwagons, as you probably a guessed, right? I don't really much give a fuck about most shit that people talk about. And that's not to say that I know better than them or that I'm somehow smarter, wiser, or anything like that. It's just, I'm just going to keep it a buck. Most of what I think people talk about is bullshit. It's drivel. Like, it's useless, meaningless, noise. It's just shit to be canceled so when I talk about this person I'm not talking about them in the sense of trying to ride a bandwagon or anything like that it's just as an object lesson an object lesson and the subject I like the most and that's talking about what's real the reality of matters right so with that <laughs> caveat put in place I want to discuss a little bit about the demise of the rapper known as Nipsey Hussle I'm not going to eulogize the man I didn't know him matter of fact I had heard the name only a few times never listened to his music never listened to any of his albums none of his stuff right I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know everything he was doing in the community or not doing, right? I've got the same general background that any American with two minutes on Google can figure out about Nipsey Hussle, right? So what I understand about the cat, he was born in L.A. and Crenshaw is a member of the Rolling 60s Crips, which, by the way, those of you know who I used to gangbang back in the day would have been enemies of mine. Came out, was hustling mixtapes, things like that. Got to come up, became a fairly well-known rapper. Again, not necessarily my cup of tea, so I never listened to his shit. But parlayed some of his resources into doing stuff in his community from all accounts. And subsequently, yesterday, met his demise. He was shot and killed. And there was two other people who were also shot, either injured or dead, I don't know, in the incident. He was 33. And the only reason why I know that is because somebody made references to this being a Masonic killing. And that's all really I'm going to say about Nipsey Huss because the people that I want to eulogize is us Dr. Tommy Curry wrote in The Man Not that because the black ADOS man is a, a walking, living, breathing caricature, right? A fictional character in the minds of most people in America, if not all people in America, that the reality of his everyday existence is of no consequence to anyone who is not an ADOS or black male. That's clearly established fact. When Nipsey was alive, when I am alive, not really anyone gives a shit about the truth, the reality of my existence here in this country and on this planet, right? Nobody talks about the everyday truth of what it means to be a black ADOS male. In America, the few scholars, shout out to Dr. Tommy Curry and Dr. T. Hassan Johnson, among a few, a very few, a few scholars have made it their life's work to study the reality 
of the ADOS mill existence in the United States of America. The rest of the motherfuckers is on that old intersectionality theory, which just turns us into mimetic, meaning imitation, white male hegemons. And tries to say that everything we are, everything we constitute is toxic. And if you don't believe me, you only have to look any, you don't have to look any further than the so-called Pookie and Ray Ray wars that you see all throughout black male media. Right? For those of you who are not in the know, let me explain what this is all about. Ostensibly, you have two groups of black ADOS males. You got the Pookie slash Ray Ray, you know, your garden variety average everyday hood nigga, right? Maybe uneducated, maybe not. Definitely though, not upwardly mobile. This is not somebody you're going to meet at a fondue spot or at a dinner party. He's usually out ripping and running the streets. He might have three or four babies, mamas, five, six kids, constantly out there trying to flip whatever the drug of choice is of the day, hustling, grinding, scraping, scratching, ain't really doing much of nothing of note or substance that supposedly benefits the world at large and is as disposable as a diaper. You see Pookie's slash Ray Ray's die every day. And their deaths are usually of no great consequence and or note to anybody except their immediate families if they lucky. And that's your Pookies and Ray Rays. Then you got the so-called educated lames. The educated lame is the brother who stuck his nose to the grindstone, who went and got his education while other brothers was out chasing females and playing football or gang banging in the streets. They was in the libraries getting their studies on. Did fairly well on their SATs, made it to college, studied to become doctors, lawyers, you know, politicians even. Right? And were taken from the mud, if you will, the dog shit that constitutes ADOS life in this country and elevated into the gardens. But the whole time, an entire culture was dead set against them, calling them Oreos, wannabe white boys, you know, shit like that. Girls wouldn't look at them and give them, you know, give them a second look, let alone a sniff of some pussy. And even now, they can't get the respect they deserve because bitches love pookies and ray rays. I think I've encapsulated the argument. But when you look at this whole pookie slash ray ray versus the educated lame war, you come to understand one really important thing. The truth ain't in either side. Not every brother lives the life of a pookie slash Ray Ray. In other words, those people who say that reparations constitutes criminal justice reform for black people. Nah, that's some bullshit. There's many brothers that ain't never done a day in jail. The overwhelming majority of us don't go to jail, or at least on no major bids. Sure, we get arrested, harassed, and fucked with. Sometimes we get shot. Sometimes we get beat up. But we ain't going to prison like that. There's a lot of us that never wanted to get involved in the gang life and didn't feel ashamed or needed to be ashamed to do it. Right? So... The reality is, is that our existence isn't all Pookie and Ray Ray. 
But it is also true that the reality of our existence is not these educated lames either. Because the educated lames can't answer me one question. What do you do about brothers like me? In this whole Pookie versus Ray Ray, or Pookie and Ray Ray versus educated lame thing, I'm an educated Pookie. I'm the lotus flower that was never plucked out of the bullshit. Just as intelligent as any of you. Have an IQ of 160. I'm studied across so many different subjects. I've lost count. I can hold my own in conversations with doctors and lawyers and have. But I also gang banged. I also witnessed murder on top of murder. I lived in a neighborhood that's so filthy it could be considered third world conditions and is considered third world conditions by the UN. But you educated lame so-called don't have an answer for brothers like me. I ain't really made it to no high heights. Ain't nobody plucked me out of the gardens of ADOS male existence and put me into a place of any type of safety or primacy in this culture. I don't have food security. I don't have a good neighborhood I live in. I'm barely making it from day to day. But I'm not out here running the prison games and shit that I would have had I been a Pookie and Ray Ray. So I'm kind of stuck. And none of you, none of you, none of you in America will address the reality of black male existence. The ADOS male existence is to play a role, a caricature, a joke, a minstrel show. Whether he's a pookie slash Ray Ray or an educated lame, we all being sucky. Everybody's trying to use us as a replacement for the reparations they need to have an average, regular American existence as citizens in the country of their birth. Just like our ancestors were enslaved, brutalized, used, defrauded, lied to, disrespected, stolen from, mistreated, maltreated, <laughs> maligned, so are you. And the only time, the only time anybody's ever interested in the reality of what our circumstance is as ADOS males in this country, boom, is when we're dead. Especially if we died violently. Oh, that becomes news. That's that's reality. That's the news. Our lives, our struggle for peace, for compassion, for justice, for righteousness, for health, for wealth, for care, concern. That shit ain't news. Don't nobody give a fuck about that while we up walking around and breathing with the spark of life in our minds and bodies. But as soon as we become worm food, we become persons of note. So I have no eulogy to offer. No eulogy to offer for Nipsey Russell or Nipsey Hussle, sorry. Or Nipsey Russell for that matter. They just two dead black men. Nobody cared about their black male life while they was here. So I'm not going to eulogize them now. No, I eulogize you. A dead people, mentally dead people who exist within the confines of a culture that constitutes a murder machine that is comfortable as fuck with the demise of ADOS black male lives. You're the one who deserves the eulogy. You all of you's riding this train talking about rest in power. Why should he have ha had to rest in power? Why couldn't you have fought together with him to gain power while he was living? Miss me with that bullshit. That's all I wanted to say on that family. It's your man Mark Black. Bullshit lives and bullshit deaths is the order of the day for the ADOS male. Until the next time I see you, I want to wish you love, peace, prosperity, and real power in this life to our people.